Good day and welcome to the quick start guide of PHP Runner, ASPRunner.net and ASPRunner Pro. Whether you just downloaded the trial version or purchased your copy from xlinesoft.com, this step-by-step -step tutorial is to help you get an idea about the application and its main features. At the end of this tutorial, you will be able to create your project promptly and smoothly. I am going to use PHP Runner for this demonstration. However, the exact principles you see here will apply to both ASPRunner.net as well as ASPRunner Pro. After launching the application, you will now see the first screen. You can open the help file by pressing the help button on the navigation bar at any step during the creation of your project. You can navigate by using the button panel and clicking back or next to move between the screens. If you already have a database, select blank application to build the project from scratch. Alternatively, you can choose one of the predefined templates. Templates are pre-made sample projects and they also create all the required database tables for you. Here I selected blank application as I already have a database. I entered a project name and location, then click next to proceed to the database type selection screen. It is now time to select the database type. All popular databases are supported. A list of most recent connections is also available for selection. I have a MySQL database, so I select MySQL and then click Next. You now enter the database login credentials. The host, which I'm going to leave as localhost. Enter the database user and password and click Connect. A list of available databases will appear in the drop-down for selection. But you also have the option to create a new database. After selecting the desired database, click Next to proceed to the Data Source Table section. On the Data Source Table screen, you can modify the tables, fields and the database structure, as well as create new tables, queries and relations between them. You can also create dashboards, charts and reports to present your project data in a user-friendly way. At the left, you now have a list of data source tables within the selected database from the previous step. By default, the first table in the list will always be selected. I am going to unselect it and confirm that I want the table removed from the project. I select customers, invoices and orders. Click Next to proceed to the Edit SQL Query page. This screen provides options for modifying the database and the tables using SQL queries. You can generate SQL queries via Query Designer or write the code all on your own. Using the Query Designer can help you sort and filter your data, create aliases to the fields and control the data output on the pages. You also can preview the results and create additional where clauses. For demonstration purposes, on the customer table, I am going to sort via the ID column and filter out country region USA. You can now look at the SQL created by the query designer. Moreover, have a peek at the results this query will output. Click Next to proceed to the Pages selection screen. Now for each table in the project, you can select the pages you would like to generate. You can also set additional options, for example, Show Add, Edit, View Pages in a pop-up. Or freeze the header of the grid on the list page. I'm going to select the list page, Edit Record, Add New and Delete Record for each table individually.
Click next to proceed to the choose field options. On this screen you can configure search and filter settings and set up different columns for different device types. You can also choose the fields to appear on each page. Do this by selecting the respective checkboxes. For example, I select the customer table. Now for each page type, list, search, add and edit pages, select the tick box next to the field you would like to display for each field. On the list page, I only need the first few columns to display but I need all columns to display for the search, add and edit pages. I now repeat the process on the invoices and order tables. Click next to proceed to miscellaneous settings. On the miscellaneous settings screen, you configure the project settings such as application language, map settings, notifications, SMS and email settings, as well as table specific settings such as the number of records per page, search and filter settings, and next and previous buttons on the edit and view pages. Click next to proceed to the security screen. Here on the security screen, you configure the user registration and authentication system, as well as to restrict access to the database. You can set up hard-coded login and password combination, or you can store it in a database, or even use Active Directory. You can also regulate access to the specific tables and pages via user group permissions. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to select hard-coded and set the username and password to be admin and admin. Click next to proceed to the page designer. The next step is the visual appearance customization. On the page designer screen, you can customize and position the elements and set the layout and grid type for each table in a project. I now demonstrate the simple drag and drop of elements to suit your needs. Options like additional buttons, code snippets and custom map are available to make your application even more dynamic. Next up is the editor screen that displays a preview of the selected page. Here you can choose and modify the style and add custom CSS. I'm going to select the default theme and normal size. I now preview some of the pages that are about to be generated under the customer table. Click next to proceed to the event page. You can extend the functionality of your application by adding your code to events. Events are actions that are performed automatically when certain conditions are met. For instance, a record was added to the database or the user opened up the list page. You can use simple event code snippets or write the code on your own. On the next screen, Select the output directory where you would like to put the generated PHP pages. You may use the built-in Apache web server or a custom one to preview the project locally. You can also configure the server database connection. As soon as everything is completed, you are ready to build. Now you can preview the application in a browser and start testing it. Moreover, you have the option to open output folder of the project, create a desktop application, create SQL scripts, share your application with other people, publish your project using the demo account provided free of charge. 
You can also upload the files to your web server using the built-in FTP client or any third-party FTP software. I am going to view the application in my browser and do a few tests to see if it is working as intended. I trust that you find this quick start tutorial helpful. Thanks for watching. Till next time.